everyone, and welcome to the Modern Java course. Java has a huge and conservative API. That's a good thing. But sometimes a missing method or capability is just infuriating. Why can't this class include this method? Why is this API missing? With Manifold, we can solve that problem and be compatible with older versions of Java. If Java adds that feature in a later version, we'd still be compatible. Isn't that fantastic? Better yet, it provides many such extensions out of the box to make Java better for all of us. Let's find out. Before I proceed, as usual, the code for this and the other videos in this series is available on my GitHub page. So check out this project, start it, and follow me on GitHub. We first need to add the ext dependency and the usual compiler boilerplate, uh, boilerplate to Maven. This is no different than before, only a different dependency name. Here we have a standard list of string numbers. Think of it as strings we read from somewhere and want to convert them to integers. This is standard Java since Java 8. Nothing special. But one frequent complaint about Java is verbosity, and it's no different here. The stream method is redundant. I get why we have it. We want separation of responsibilities between collection and stream. That makes sense if you're the author of the Java API. But for me as a developer, it's just more boilerplate and makes no sense. With Manifold, we can remove that stream method using a simple trick. I already implemented that trick, so I can remove it. You will notice the, this works as if the map method is defined in collection directly. Here we can see the extension class. Extensions work very similarly to interface uh, default methods. We can define a method that appears to us as if it's a part of an API, but we write it in a separate class. Manifold finds it by looking for packages with the name matching the class name. Notice that the package here is com.debugagent.extensions.java.util collection, which includes the full class name. In this package, we can create extension classes by marking them with the extension annotation. If the method isn't static, we add the instance of this as a, the first parameter. Notice we can use gene uh, generics and all the other capabilities we normally, uh, normally use. We just need to use the argument instead of the instance values. Once we refresh Maven, map will appear as a method of collection. We can extend any object or interface in this way, but this gets much better. The previous depend uh, dependencies were very big. We can add these dependencies, which include ready-made extensions for many built-in classes in Java. In order for this to work properly, we also need to add the jar plugin boilerplate in the bottom. Once we do that, we can package our own extensions as libraries and use the ones from Manifold. Once refreshed, we can see the library jars here. Let's look at the text uh, extensions. You will notice that the Java Lang string class is extended. Unfortunately, the documentation for the extensions is very big, but source code is very readable. So I can open the specific class and IntelliJ will show uh, that for me. The first time you open it, you might be prompted to download the source code, which you should. It will make the code more readable and will add documentation. Here we can uh, see there are many uh, cool APIs and extensions. Notice you can still add your own extension methods on top of these. There is no limit on the number of extension classes. Let's try the remove prefix method which lets us remove a prefix from a string if it exists. 
we start by creating a string representing a pretty common use case. We have a URL submitted from the user, and we want to display that URL on the web. Uh, did the user include the HTTPS prefix or not? Normally, I would have to invoke starts with to check and then use an if statement to determine that. This is just a simple method call. Now, you might say that you can and should do this in a utility class. That's fair. But it uh, creates a lot of uh, clutter in the code when it comes to scaling your work. This lets you place utility methods where they should reside, uh, write more fluid code, uh, and write more fluid code. The sample we first saw with map is something that already exists in the manifold dependencies as it's not something you need to implement on your own. One common thing we need to do often is convert an input stream to a reader. All input streams have uh, that method within them now. We can just invoke the reader method instead of calling new input stream reader, then passing in UTF-8, etc. With this code, the stream is wrapped implicitly thanks to the reader method. I can control click the reader method and go directly to the extension method source code. So this acts like any other Java class. Let's show something different that we can do that we can do. For this, we will need both an input stream and an output stream. We can create both within the try statement by removing the reader and uh, the reader, reader method and then adding an output stream with a semicolon. This is all standard Java. We can now copy one stream to another with a single line of code, which is pretty convenient. The input stream has a copy method, which wasn't there before. Again, very convenient, but there's so much more. An array is an object in Java. This is something every Java developer learns early on, but it's outside of our control. It has one attribute and that's it. It's pretty limited and weak as far as objects go. With Manifold, we can see any array has many methods that are already built in. Most of them are from the arrays class and now occupy their rightful place within the object itself. How does that work and can we add our own methods to the array? There's a special case class in Manifold that works as fil uh, filter for arrays. Manifold.rt.api.array. You can write an extension to this class and it will appear in all arrays as you would expect. The arrays this object is given as an object since primitive arrays aren't convertible to object arrays. Other than that, this works like any other class we extend. This is all fantastic, but it also raises the question, if I can add methods, why not an interface? The answer is a bit problematic. You can add an interface, but not any arbitrary interface. Initially, when I looked at this, I wanted to add auto-closable to the lock interface. This is sadly not possible. To explain why, I first need to explain how all this works in high-level terms. Let's say I have a Java class and it has two methods, method A and method B. In Java, we can't add method C to the Java class. There's no getting around that. Manifold can't break the rules of Java. It doesn't work that way. Our code thinks it's invoking method C on the Java class, but manif Manifold compiles it as a call to the ext class instead. 
physically, this call is translated as an invoke static call. As such, it is very efficient, a very efficient system that doesn't add any runtime reflection, proxies, or any such complexities. It also means some other things. If a class has method C, which can happen if a new version of Java suddenly adds the functionality we try to add, then Manifold is smart enough to invoke the real method and not our extension. The question is, why can't we do this for an interface? After all, we can implement the method, then why not the interface? Imagine some arbitrary code invoking a method on an interface. It might not even be code in our project. It can be code that's from the JDK, let's say runnable. A class in the JDK can invoke the run method in the runnable interface. The manifold compiler has no way of changing this call. Since the interface can be implemented by multiple classes, it can't change that either. So it can't make the connection between an interface and the class, or can it? This leads us to an insane feature in Manifold, structural interfaces. We can annotate an interface with at structural, and it will work a bit differently than a regular interface. It means we can use polymorphism to cast the structured interface, just like a regular interface but it won't behave like a regular interface in the bytecode level. We can extend a class with structural interfaces. Let's look at how it's done. This is a simple interface that defines the manifold, the method size. It's pretty standard, nothing special. In fact, you will notice that size is a method of collection. The only unique thing here is the structural annotation. String doesn't have a size method. It has a length method. To solve this, we define an extension for string. I implemented a size method just uh, that just calls the length method, so this will be compatible. Notice the class is abstract and implements the sizable interface. If the interface wasn't structural, Manifold would have shown an error here. To get this working with collections, we need to make that class abstract and implement the sizable interface too. This provides Manifold with a hint of our intentions. Once this is done, we can now uh, see how it works in practice. Notice that I assigned a list of strings, which is a collection, to the sizable interface, which I just made up. No compilation error. A string is also assigned to a sizable interface without a problem. We can now write polymorphic code by invoking size on the interface, and it will behave as expected. That's powerful, but it isn't the end of it. Here's a new uh, class I created. Notice I didn't implement the sizable interface, but the method uses the same signature. Why is this important? Because we can now do this. We can cast the class to the interface we didn't implement. This effectively makes Java more like a structurally typed language, which means we can define types in a more flexible way. This is a fantastic capability, but there is one last thing. This code might seem weird, so let me explain it. We're extending the runnable interface. In this case, we don't change the interface. We inject the structural annotation into the runnable. This will only apply at in compile time and only to the classes of our project. I hope you found this video educational. If you ever felt like Java was missing something, then this is your way to add that to Java. You can even contribute it to Project Manifold itself and help a broader audience see the value of your proposed change. To me, this is the greatest contribution that Manifold has made. 
it makes it easy to change Java and experiment with these features. If you have any questions, please use the comment section. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.